something. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Donald Trump is being briefed by U.S. intelligence agencies on how they believe Russia conducted a cyber hacking campaign to try to help him win the presidential election. He's been openly skeptical about it and has described it in an interview as a political witch hunt driven by his opponents. But the vice president, Joe Biden, said it's absolutely mindless for Mr. Trump to claim he knows more than the U.S. intelligence agencies. Our North America correspondent, Nick Bryant, has more. Did a cyber attack on America organized by Vladimir Putin help put Donald Trump in the White House? U.S. intelligence can't say whether votes were changed or opinions altered. But they are convinced that Russia wanted the billionaire to win and conducted a multifaceted cyber campaign using hacking, propaganda and fake news to boost his chances of becoming president. It wasn't just the billionaire who celebrated his unexpected victory, according to U.S. intelligence. Intercepted conversations reportedly picked up senior figures in the Russian government rejoicing too, among them officials said to be aware of the alleged cyber campaign. Donald Trump will be told by America's intelligence chiefs that the Russians tried much harder to hack the computers of the Democratic National Committee than those at Republican headquarters, and also that go-betweens have been identified who allegedly handed stolen emails to the website WikiLeaks. Details from the classified report were leaked to NBC News, which has infuriated Donald Trump. How did NBC get an exclusive look into the top secret report, he asked. Who gave them this report and why? Politics. Then he went on. The Democratic National Committee would not allow the FBI to study or see its computer info after it was supposedly hacked by Russia. So how and why are they so sure about hacking if they never even requested any examination of the computer servers? What is going on? Vice President Joe Biden said it was time for Donald Trump to grow up. The idea that, uh, um, that you know more than the intelligence community knows. It's a little like saying, I know more about physics than my professor. I didn't read the book. I just know I know more. Grow up. Time to be an adult. You're president. Donald Trump this morning complained of a political witch hunt, and his spokesman said he's right to be cautious. The president-elect, I think, has a healthy skepticism of everything, and that's important. People need to know that when decisions are made, and we've seen this in the past, that a rush to judgment is not in the, the country's best interest. This morning, Donald Trump got into an online dispute with Arnold Schwarzenegger over ratings for the TV show Celebrity Apprentice. And so he continues on with his unconventional journey to the White House, but troubled by that nagging question, did Russia help him on his way? Nick Bryant, BBC News, New York. The three men who run U.S. intelligence are sitting down with Donald Trump and his team right now to explain why they think Russia waged cyber war during the election to keep Hillary Clinton out of the White House. Trump says the whole story is a witch hunt, is demanding an investigation into intelligence leaks to the media, while taking time to take pot shots at Arnold Schwarzenegger's TV ratings and talking to the staff of Vogue magazine. Just hours before his briefing by the US intelligence agencies on the hacking of Democrat email accounts, Donald Trump called the claims a political witch hunt. The president-elect has repeatedly rejected allegations that the Russian government was ultimately behind the cyber attacks in the run-up to the presidential election. He's now ensconced with the heads of US intelligence and we await his response. But earlier, the current vice president, Joe Biden, told Mr. Trump it was time to grow up, time to be an adult. Horik O'Brien reports. You don't need to be an army of clandestine Russian hackers to find out what's going on in Donald Trump's head. Just follow him on Twitter. Today, for example, between visiting Condé Nast boss Anna Winter, he was having a pop at new Apprentice host Arnold Schwarzenegger, having a pop at the media for questions about how he would fund the wall. His tweeting prompted this from Joe Biden. Grow up. Time to be an adult. You're president. You got to do something. It's the tweet the president-elect sends after his intelligence briefing today at Trump Tower about hacking that may rank as one of the most anticipated ever. 
He's skeptical, to put it mildly, of the intelligence that points the finger at the Russian state. Today he called the controversy over hacking a political witch hunt, echoed by his team. There are those out there who are trying to delegitimize his presidency, review the election results, and you know it. I mean, and he's helping is, that if, by if, refusing to accept the obvious if, about the we, intelligence community's had, conclusions about Russia being behind the hacks. The president-elect and all of us who work for him mm -hmm. and the vice president-elect, I assure you, are against any foreign interference in the United States of America. Parts of the intelligent briefing that President Obama received yesterday on hacking are starting to emerge. Reports, for example, that the U.S. have identified the Russian agents behind the alleged hacking. Also, intercepted conversations between Russian officials expressing happiness at Trump's win. Reports as well that the go-betweens who passed stolen emails onto the likes of WikiLeaks and DC Leaks have been identified. But then a qualification. Officials reiterate there is no single intercepted communication that qualifies as a smoking gun on Russia's intention to benefit Trump's candidacy. If I focus on Russian Federation, you have um, uh, Fancy Bear. Yesterday, we heard from the boss of the cybersecurity company who identified the two entities that hacked Democrat emails. Today, the IT expert who tried to debunk his work, but ended up concurring that it was the Russians. This hacking campaign was so big that it couldn't possibly have been an individual. It was so prolific that we know this had to have been a large group, uh, a big directed effort with lots of resources. They were multilingual. They were uh, hacking at such a scale that we're able to say, confidently that this is a big group. In the last hour, Mike Pence joined Donald Trump ahead of the intelligence briefing, closely followed by the intelligence agents themselves. The briefing Trump's receives as we speak will be an assessment, and there will probably be room for skeptics to question the findings. But how much room? If the intelligence services manage to convince the president-elect that it was the Russians, what will he say about it in the virtual world? And what will he do about it in the real one. Donald Trump has been vociferous, even confrontational, in dismissing allegations that Russian hackers tried to influence the presidential election. So he's going to find it tough, to say the least, to explain tonight's revelations released by America's intelligence agencies. Here's the single sentence in the report that throws everything Mr. Trump has said up until now into doubt. We assess, it says, with high confidence that President Putin did order a hacking campaign to influence the election to help Mr. Trump's chances by discrediting Hillary Clinton. Well, Mr. Trump has already started to backpedal, admitting Russia could be involved, but insisting the election's outcome was not affected. But his presidency has now been engulfed by a storm even before it has begun. Rarely has a private meeting had such a public, fractious build-up. America's intelligence chiefs came to New York to brief the president-elect on matters of national security. But before they'd even arrived, Donald Trump had dismissed their work as a witch hunt. For days, he's poured scorn on the findings of a report he hadn't seen. Finally, this afternoon, he was shown the files. Some of the detail remains classified, but much of the report was made public this afternoon. Its authors say they have high confidence that Vladimir Putin ordered a campaign to influence the election that Putin and his government aspired to help Trump's chances by discrediting Hillary Clinton, that hacking operations were conducted against both the Democrats and Republicans, and that the material on the Democrats was given to WikiLeaks, who published it online. Putin is said to have ordered Russian government agencies and state-funded media to influence the campaign. Social media users were allegedly hired to help too. This presents Mr. Trump with something of a problem. Having backed Putin very publicly recently, he seems to have been persuaded by his intelligence officials. He issued a conciliatory statement this afternoon. I had a constructive meeting and conversation with the leaders of the intelligence community this afternoon, he said, quickly pointing out that hacking had had absolutely no effect on the outcome of the election, including the fact that there was no tampering whatsoever with voting machines. We need to aggressively combat and stop cyber attacks, he said. I'll appoint a team to give me a plan within 90 days of taking office.
So a cessation of hostilities. But the very fact that the president-elect picked a fight with the people who provide his eyes and ears on the world has been a serious cause for concern here. This is just unheard of and unprecedented. And I, I, you know, I, I think we all have to be concerned about this. This is, not, this is not the kind of bickering that ought to be going on in public. And Mr. Trump's tweet first, talk later policy prompted this blunt message from the outgoing vice president today. Grow up, Donald. Grow up. Time to be an adult. You're president. But there's little to indicate Donald Trump is about to change. The ballots confirming his election win were brought to Congress today and ratified. He'll take office in exactly two weeks' time, with the issue of Russia looming large, no doubt, at the top of his entry. Well, Martin's in Washington tonight and joins us now. Martin, these revelations on the very day that Congress finally formally certified Donald Trump's election victory. Indeed, Julie. And you, you know what, what's really got under Donald Trump's skin here, I think, is the notion that people might think that he didn't win this election fair and square. That may be what this whole thing has been about. He was desperate to nail that down. And it was front and center of that statement he made this afternoon. There was no evidence to suggest that the outcome of the election was influenced. And to be fair to Mr. Trump, that's exactly what these intelligence officials told Congress when they were laying out their case to them yesterday. But then in a statement today, the report's authors said that they specifically did not make an assessment of the impact that these activities had on the outcome of the election. So everybody may well want this just to go away, to disappear, this situation now, but that question still hangs, as does the question of Mr. Trump's relationship with Vladimir Putin, this bromance that was brewing, this mutual appreciation society. Remember, just last week, Barack Obama implemented a whole new series of sanctions on Russia, and there was a thought that Donald Trump may, when he takes office, revoke these, rein them in. Now, that's gonna be very difficult now. He has grudgingly accepted this afternoon that Vladimir Putin did have a hand in the hacking to try and influence the election, he can't be seen to be too close to him anymore. And of course, everybody's been watching the running commentary that Donald Trump has provided on his Twitter account. Do you think you'll have learned any lessons about his social media use from his experience in the last 24 hours? Well, I'm not sure. I mean, it's exhausting just to watch his social media account. It starts often before 7 o'clock in the morning, the, tw the tweeting, and it goes on into the night. Just this week, he's aimed blows at a whole series of motor companies, a whole series of broadcasters. He's had a go at North Korea. He's had a go at China. He's had a go at the opponents of Israel. This afternoon, he picked a fight with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I've no idea how he finds the time to do it in the schedule that he's got. He says this works. A couple of these tweets at car manufacturers, directed specifically at car manufacturers this week, were followed up by state statements from those firms that they changed policy. They weren't going to send jobs to Mexico anymore. They keep them in the States. So he'll say it works. It's a direct line as well for the American people to the thoughts of their president. He'll say that's important. And he's cast himself as the maverick, the outsider. He'll say this is what he's all about. But it's got him into trouble today. It's got him into trouble before. The tweets are often inaccurate. Sometimes they're inconsistent. Will he have learned anything from this? Possibly not. Don't expect the tweeting to stop. Martin, thank you very much indeed. Well, more now on our top story, the ongoing spat between Donald Trump and the intelligence community over claims of Russian hacking during the election campaign. The vice president's accused him of acting like a child, so he should grow up uh, when he takes the White House. Well, let's speak to associate editor at American Politics website, The Hill, Niall Stanage. A uh, very good evening to you, Niall. Thanks for joining us. What effect will it have on the relationship between Donald Trump and the intelligence communities if he meets these officials, they stick to their story that, yes, indeed, there was Russian influence, Russia did attempt to uh, have an impact on the election result, but he continues with this line that, it's going to be, that it was a witch hunt. I think the final part of your question is the key point. Will he continue to make this argument that it was a witch hunt? If he does so, I think that's obviously very problematic. Any president is highly dependent upon the intelligence services for briefings on an almost daily basis about threats facing the United States. We've already seen some members of the intelligence services implicitly criticize Mr. Trump, even in a Senate hearing yesterday where, uh, you know, uh, the director of national intelligence referred to him uh, disparaging the intelligence services, not merely being skeptical about them. 
So ultimately, what from the point that we are at now, what can you see happening in the coming weeks and the coming months when Mr. Uh, Trump does eventually take office? Because it's a bad point to be starting from. He's not even the president yet. And the relationship between the intelligence communities, between the uh, CIA, the FBI, the DNI, the NSA, they're already at a low between um, these officials and President-elect Trump. Yes, absolutely. And I think that this might be one of the relatively rare examples where we see Donald Trump actually, if not climb down, at least try to have a more harmonious relationship. There have been some small signs of that. He sent out a, a tweet recently declaring himself in a rather Trumpian fashion a big fan of intelligence, suggesting that the uh, criticisms or the uh, idea of hostility had been exaggerated. I think he may continue to do that. And of course, there will be new people uh, appointed or nominated just next week here in Washington. We will see, for example, his nominee to lead the CIA uh, at a Senate hearing uh, pending confirmation. Should he draw a line under this when he does become president? Or is he? In, will he have to act if he does accept this idea that uh, Vladimir Putin, senior officials within the uh, Russian administration, did attempt to influence the election results? I think that's a great question because if this is seen as uh, Russia being rightly blamed, then one would assume the political pressure on Donald Trump will be aimed at him retaining the sanctions that President Obama has just placed on Russia. Now, it doesn't seem like Donald Trump really wants to do that. So the question is, is there some kind of uh, fine line that he can walk that would enable him to both not completely blast the intelligence agencies, but yet at the same time do more or less what he wants to wants to do, which is to take a milder uh, line toward Vladimir Putin and Russia. And he's going to presumably be in a very difficult position with Congress. I mean, we've got a Republican majority, but there will be the vast majority of uh, officials in the Senate, uh, in the House of Representatives, who will and who've spent their career listening to intelligence community, intelligence ag agencies, and taking their word for gospel. That's not going to be a, an easy position that he's going to find himself in if he continues with this line that there has been a witch hunt. Certainly not. And in fact, it's a, a key issue on which he is separated, not just from Democrats, but from the rest of the Republican Party. I mean, of course, the tradition of the Republican Party has been as the more hawkish one when it comes to Russia and, and before that the Soviet Union. There is still considerable hostility and suspicion of Russia among other Republicans. So this position that Donald Trump has staked out does put him at odds with the bulk of his own party as well as the opposition party. Uh, and we've heard from Vice President uh, Joe Biden who has said that uh, Donald Trump should grow up, should uh, stop acting like a child. Um, is that a welcome thing, the Vice President who is on his way out? off the roll to be saying that or is that just going to anger uh, President-elect Trump and perhaps push him the other way? I think the, the latter is the more likely option and it's interesting to me that President Obama himself has been fairly conciliatory toward the president-elect, has tried for the most part not to inflame him. And I think that's been seen here among people that I speak to as a desire on Obama's part to retain some level of influence, however minimal, over Trump, uh, Vice President Biden clearly going for a much more confrontational approach. Okay, Niall Stanager, the uh, Associate Editor at American Politics website, The Hill. Many thanks indeed for uh, joining us here this evening. In the last hour, U.S. intelligence chiefs have released their report on what they believe to be Russian interference in the American presidential election. It is as conclusive as it is damning, pointing the finger directly at Vladimir Putin and saying he ordered an influence campaign aimed at undermining public faith in the U.S. democratic system. It states their understanding that the Russian government developed a clear preference, they say, for President-elect Trump over Hillary Clinton and backed what private cyberspace companies have long concluded, that a Russian group known as Fancy Bear was behind the leaked emails of top Democrats. The report emerged shortly after a meeting between Trump and his top spies this afternoon. Donald Trump called the meeting constructive and appeared to admit that foreign spies could be behind some of the hacking. But he refused once again to believe the outcome of the election had in any way been affected. 
This is where it all started so publicly, the Democratic National Convention in July, a chance for a presidential candidate to shine in front of an adoring party conference. But Hillary's coronation was mired by scandal. The chair of the DNC, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, had to resign on the eve of the party convention after a leak of internal email showed officials actively favoring Clinton over Bernie Sanders. Wind forward six months, the leaks get worse, Trump wins the November election, and Barack Obama takes to the stage to announce sanctions and expel 35 Russian diplomats in response to what US intelligence services believe was a Russian-ordered cyber attack to deliberately influence the election. This is a major headache for Trump. After all, it's not exactly in his interest to acknowledge that he perhaps benefited from state-sponsored hacking. It's made all the more awkward after those comments back in July. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. The last 24 hours has shown the capricious nature of the debate. First, a series of tweets saying that he was a big fan of intelligence agencies and then a follow-up, asking the services why they hadn't examined Democratic Committee computers. This afternoon, Trump was briefed by top spies outlining the evidence they have for Russia's involvement in the hacking. He's conceded now the leaks may have come from foreign enemies, but insists there was absolutely no effect on the outcome of the election. Perhaps he's right. We might never know for sure. But this is no longer about the part Russia may be playing in America's domestic affairs, it's about the relationship the President of the United States will have with the agencies tasked with keeping America safe. If Trump no longer trusts his own spies, the Kremlin's work is done. Well, we're joined now by Thomas Ridd, Professor of Security Studies at King's College. He's been looking through the CIA assessment. It is unflinching, Thomas, in the way it points the finger so directly, not just at Russia, not just at Russian hackers, but at the Russian government and at Putin. Yes, so, so it's important to keep this in historical context. A lot of us in the threat intelligence and digital forensics community have studied Russian hacking campaigns for many years, in fact, two decades. And the one thing that is really crucial is they make mistakes again and again. And whenever they make a mistake, we can look at these mistakes and learn from them and link uh, breaches and attacks to each other and, in fact, to the perpetrator. So you don't think you've read the full report, you don't think it has oversold this understanding of Russian influence then? The US intelligence community have been tracking Russian operations, not just in, the, in, 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 in computers, computer operations, network operations, but Russian influence operations for many decades. They have coverage through human sources as well as technical sources. And we can tell from their very strong intelligence language in the report that their sources, including their human sources, it seems to be very strong. So this is a significant uh, observation. The trouble is, standing back, you could say President Obama ordered this report a month ago. It comes as Donald Trump is about to be inaugurated. It seems to favour Hillary Clinton by pointing the finger so directly at Trump support, uh, Putin's support for Trump. Why wouldn't you be a bit sceptical about the findings here? Well, again, let's keep it in perspective. Obama was very reluctant during the election campaign. He was, he, of course, he campaigned for Clinton, but he was very reluctant to use the intelligence community and to point fingers at what was going on. Because, of course, he, like many other people, thought that Clinton would win anyway, so it wouldn't matter in the end. But that clearly, clearly didn't happen. You have traced the way the server was hacked. You were looking particular emails to John Podesta, how the spam filter failed, how the, how the email this were essentially leaked. What makes you link, for example, John Podesta at one end to Vladimir Putin at the other? In that particular case, the Russian operators made the mistake of and left part of the infrastructure that they used in order to breach thousands to attack and then breached thousands of targets, hundreds and thousands of targets, and only one of them was John Podesta. So because they made that mistake with a link shortening account, and this is only one mistake of many that they made, we can actually piece together a highly detailed, full resolution picture of their targeting over a period of many months. And it looks exactly like the target set of a military intelligence agency would look like. And a military intelligence agency means Putin himself? It, the operation, uh, we don't 
uh, the operation most likely started as a, as a bottom-up initiative, and then Putin signed off on it at some point in mid-2016, which is also part of this intelligence estimate. It's easy to understand what Russia wants to gain uh, from this. How do you think Donald Trump himself has handled the leaks? We know from history, and this is a very long history, Cold War history, that the Russian intelligence community have honed their skills in driving wedges into the uh, political systems of their adversaries to multiply divisions. First, they uh, wanted to divide Clinton and Bernie Sanders, which they succeeded in doing. And now it seems that they're trying and daring Trump to deepen the division between his administration and his own foreign policy and intelligence establishment. So by tweeting out these unhinged statements, he is indeed doing exactly what uh, the Russians and probably Vladimir Putin want him to do. Thomas, thank you very much for putting some of that to us. The former director of the CIA, James Woolsey, joins us now. You might remember he quit uh, the Trump tra transition team this week as he explained he didn't want to, as he said, fly under false colors as a senior security advisor to Donald Trump. Thank you very much indeed sir, for joining us uh, this evening. Had you read that report uh, before it was released to us and do you agree broadly with what it says? Mm, no, I hadn't read it before it was uh, released. I still have to read it. Um, and uh, it seems to me that uh, it's, uh, uh, it sounds like a, a, a soundly done report. It, uh, from what we hear, uh, makes uh, uh, several points. So one is that the Russian effort is wide-reaching, and that is certainly true. The Russians uh, call what they do disinformation, disinformatia, otherwise known as lying. Uh, and they uh, target um, institutions in the West uh, or institu any institutions in countries that uh, they are uh, uh, concerned about or interested in. Uh, they've been doing this since uh, the 1940s anyway, maybe the 1930s. And uh, they are, uh, th they've done it, of course, uh, until very recently uh, without using cyber, but using uh, all sorts of other uh, devices, uh, forged documents, uh, uh, doctored photographs, uh, et cetera. Um, well, hundreds and hundreds of uh, people, actually thousands of people uh, work on this, according to defectors who've gone into it in some detail. So that apparently is confirmed. Um, by the report, and uh, and I think it's good uh, and and sound for Americans and uh, the rest of us also to understand that the Russians operate this way, that they've operated this way for many years, and they're not going to change under Putin. Uh, I think that uh, it also uh, seems the report seems to uh, uh, say uh, that uh, whatever the Russians did. Uh, it does not seem uh, to have influenced uh, the outcome of the election. That's not just something Trump is saying, as I understand it. It's something that the report says, and it's uh, something that uh, uh, Jim Clapper has uh, said uh, also. Um, they would have needed to, to do that. I think they would have needed to have gotten into the voting machine and counting process. And that's something we have to upgrade in the United States. A lot so, of localities tend to run our elections. Can I just come in? You, yes. You've said this is good and sound, and yet we know that Donald Trump has refused to believe it had any effect on the election outcome. What do you read well, into that? Well, uh, uh, no one else I know has charged that uh, it, uh, uh, it has had an effect on the outcome. Uh, I don't believe uh, the either the uh, intelligence organizations or the FBI or uh, indeed uh, anything I've read here suggests that there was any effect. Uh, it uh, 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 is something that one needs to fix because if, they, if it's not fixed, if the voting machines aren't perfect, um, there could be an effect someday. Uh, but uh, so, uh, I don't know of any uh, of any authoritative statement that uh, it affected uh, you know the, the counting uh, the models that did the, the counting of the ballots and that sort so of thing. So what what would be your message to Democrats tonight then who hear this report which points the finger at Putin leading uh, a campaign of influence over the election and must be feeling outraged by this? Well, I would think that, uh, that uh, all Americans, Democrats and Republicans, uh, ought to, uh, if not be outraged, uh, somewhere between outraged and highly concerned, 
uh, that the Russians, by doing, continuing to do what they've done for decades and doing it with uh, advanced technology, could have an effect the next time, a real effect, uh, not just a theoretical one, on uh, the outcome of elections, uh, Britain's elections, our elections, other elections. We need to get uh, in control of our own systems and we need to find ways to counter what the uh, uh, Russians are, uh, are doing. We can can't I, let this just ride along. But can I gently suggest that some may hear that as rather naive. We understand there were reports of senior Russian officials celebrating a Trump victory. We know that Trump himself seems to be very friendly with Russia. He's refused to point the finger at the state himself. What more evidence do you need that this is Russian influence working well, on American it, politics? You know, uh, if uh, the Russians had real elections and there were ones, say, between uh, Gorbachev and Putin, you'd probably have a lot of celebrations in the U.S. and Britain and in the West uh, uh, that uh, Gorbachev had, uh, had won. Uh, even if uh, we had not uh, gotten involved in doing any of the kinds of things that the Russians uh, uh, do with respect to uh, interfering with, uh, with voting and so forth. Uh, I think uh, uh, one of the things you're seeing here is that um, Americans come slowly uh, as a nation uh, to uh, taking effective efforts at opposing and fighting something that is challenging them. And we're still in the beginning stages of this. You remember that Churchill said the Americans always do the right thing, but unfortunately only after they've exhausted all other mm -hmm. possibilities. Uh, you need to realize that we're exhausting possibilities now. Well, and uh, we, we, we uh, give us a little bit of time. We'll, uh, I think, organize things in such a way that we protect our balloting but, and help other countries protect theirs. But just take us inside uh, the mindset, which you know so well, of senior intelligence chiefs, the CIA, who have heard their commander in chief reject the explanation that they have offered. What kind of relationship lies in store for Donald Trump and the CIA now? Well, they're, they're big boys and girls, and they take a lot of criticism. It's very popular in the United States uh, politically. Uh, if uh, anything uh, comes up uh, that remotely deals with intelligence, to find some reason to uh, criticize uh, the, the CIA and uh, the rest so of publicly? American intelligence. Often, often. Um, uh, I uh, uh, have seen that uh, coming at me when I was director of central intelligence, demanding that I do impossible things, such as fire people who are already retired. Uh, I mean, uh, w the, we're not always at our best uh, uh, in the initial stages of, uh, of something. Look, it took us uh, three years uh, delay to get into World War I and two and a half years delay to get into World War II while Britain uh, held uh, Germany at bay. Uh, uh, we, we sometimes don't respond as quickly as we should. James Wolsey, thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you. Good to be with you. I've been getting away with it all my